Today I want to talk about this particular subject that will make us reflect and think based on where we may be stuck in our life right now. I wake up to so many questions on my Instagram, Facebook and email box every single day. Some of these mails, you know, scream of frustration. People are trying to get better, but they can't get better with their disease. Healthy people falling sick, beautiful relations breaking up, and people start to wonder what's going wrong. We have this sense of helplessness, the sense of hopelessness, and we start to give up. We start to trust more what is outside of our body than what is inside of us. Why do we get sick? Why do we not recover? Why do some relationships get toxic and sit, stay toxic? Why does our immune system attack us when it shouldn't? It should be protecting us, but it starts to attack us like an autoimmune conditions. Why do we suddenly have breakouts in our skin? Why does our hair suddenly start to fall? Well, there could be so many different reasons, so many reasons, right? From a vitamin deficiency to sometimes, very rarely, maybe two to three percent of a very strong gene. Sometimes it could be the side effect of medication that we need to be on. Sometimes it just could be overall stress in our lives. Today, what I want to leave you with, and the reason I've chosen to do this, you know, in the night before bedtime, because I like us to reflect on things that are important. Too many of us reflect on the bad things that happen in the day and it prevents us from falling asleep. Too many of us reflect on things that are no longer in control. We bring up our past, we rehearse our past and that disturbs our sleep. I've been pondering on these questions that I get asked every single day. You know, there isn't a superfood for everything. Sometimes deep sleep can't fix everything. Sometimes exercise can't can't fix everything. And it makes me think more and more why these things happen to the human body. And then it goes back to 13 years when I started my practice. And when I would see sick patients, I would see blood parameters, I would hear their story, I would see their symptoms, I would see the medication that they're on. And then I started to correlate it with the disharmony that I saw within the patient. What I wanna talk about today and is for all of us to reflect because we're living in a world where we're constantly, constantly looking at AI, complication, beautiful things happening, wonders of the world, engineering wonders, medical wonders, and all of that stuff. And then people say, Luke, we have all of this stuff. Why are we the sickest that we are right now across the world? More deaths from cancer, more deaths from diabetes, more deaths from metabolic syndrome. So many people in the age group of 65 now getting dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, relationships start up great. Today we have so many tools to nurture relationships. We have so much more information than our parents and our grandparents had. What to do in a relationship, what not to do in a relationship. We have the internet, we have content, we have exposure. <coughs> the one thing, the thought process that I want to inject all of you with tonight is, at the end of the day, no matter what we have in the outside world, Think about the human body for a minute, the intelligence that it has. You could be thinking several thoughts. Your heart continues to beat. You, you, you blink involuntarily, automatically. Your pulse is working for you. Your, your body's digesting the meal that you ate two hours ago. There are thousands and thousands of functions happening in the human body at the same time. It can create a baby. It can heal a wound. It's fighting pathogens and germs. It's thinking of solving a problem. All of these things happen. Trillions of cells in the human body are constantly communicating, responding, reacting, repairing. That is the intelligence of the human body. We get awed with a TikTok video or an Instagram reel, and we don't look inside the body to appreciate the intelligence. Now, the things that I've learned, and when you go deeper into science, beautiful science, and then you go deeper into quantum physics. What do you learn? These two beautiful words, one of them is nurturing, the second is dangerous. Harmony and disharmony. For trillions of cells to communicate the right message, to start the repair job when it's needed to, to turn on inflammation when it's needed, turn off inflammation when it's not needed. How to digest a particular food. How to protect us from a food that can cause a problem. 
how to protect us from a bug that can go and cause a serious infection. All these cells, all these cells have to be in harmony with each other. When there is harmony, these cells, without us even thinking, they work on their own, with their own intelligence, their own network. Like, I don't know how many of you watched that Netflix documentary, that beautiful documentary made by a dear friend of mine, Fantastic Fungi, where it speaks about the intelligence in a forest, how fungi grows and communicates with networks, through networks, with other mushrooms and plants, like hundreds of kilometers away. That same intelligence that exists in nature, in our ecology, also exists within the body. Now, when this harmony is broken, that's when these cells start to have a problem because they don't have the right environment to communicate the right message. They're still communicating, but sometimes the wrong message. The immune system, instead of protecting us and attacking pathogens and germs, now start to attack us. Look at a relationship that starts off beautifully. Two people fall in love. There's harmony. Everything is working well until there is disharmony. Now, what causes, causes this disharmony? It could be some wrong words spoken, some childhood behaviors now playing out because we know that people reveal their colors over time. It's never in the first month of your dating relationship. It's never in the first year of your marriage. People reveal their colors, their true colors over time. It's not a bad thing. We always put on our best when we're on a date, when we're in the beginning of our relationship. And then our colors slowly come out because you can't hide it forever. That creates disharmony. Now we start to take a partner for granted. Disharmony. You move from harmony to disharmony. So people who wonder, but I was in love. Then there was harmony. There was harmony when you were in love. There was appreciation. There was everything that led to harmony. Now there's disharmony. And with disharmony, you know what happens in any relationship. Not just your partner, your husband, your wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, 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 girlfriend, girlfriend. It's even your parents, your siblings, your friends your colleagues, there is disharmony that leads to all the other negative emotions. But when there's harmony, everything's working just fine. Now let's go straight back into the human body. So when these cells, when these cells are working in harmony, harmony doesn't mean perfection. All of us are with flaws, but the human body with its intelligence learns how to adapt. Right now there could be a cell in my body that's behaving abnormally. But because there's harmony, the immune system will do the right thing at the right time. It's like a symptom. A symptom is the body doing the right thing at the right time. If there's an abnormal cell becoming a tumor, the body's doing the right thing at the right time. It's just a dangerous symptom. You get an acne or a pimple because you're eating junk food, you're sleep deprived, you have a hormonal balance. Acne is nothing but a symptom of your body doing the right thing at the right time based on the information it's getting, the kind of food, the kind of sleep and everything else. So sometimes when we're stuck in life with our disease, you know, we're getting the best treatment, the med medication, we're doing our meditation, we're doing everything. You need to sit back and see how can I bring harmony back into my body? Now, how do we bring harmony back into our body? Look around at our lives today. Is all the stress normal? No, it's not normal, but it's real. I'm not saying we can do without stress. There is always going to be stress. It is our job to bring harmony back into the body when stress causes disharmony. You have an argument right now. You had a tough day at work. It's obviously disharmony. And we're, we're allowed to go. The, the human body is so resilient. We can move from harmony to disharmony, but we need to quickly come back to harmony, which in medical terms is homeostasis. I can get stressed out, my heart rate will go up, my sugar levels will go up, my cholesterol will go up. That's the natural response to stress. But I come back to baseline, homeostasis. My breath comes down, my pulse rate comes down, my pressure comes down, blood sugar, I come down to baseline. Everyone needs to come back to baseline. A baby will go out of baseline, but will rapidly come back to baseline to be healthy. Now, when we have more disharmony, we have more disease, period. That's how it is. Disease is nothing but, you can say, oh, I had a breakdown in my DNA. What was that? Disharmony at a cellular level. Your healthy cells are able to correct a problem. 
but your unhealthy cell was not able to do the same thing. There was disharmony in the cell. We use fancy terms or the computer program, the DNA has shifted or the DNA is corrupt. A simple word is there's disharmony at every level. You're feeling stressed out right now, your blood pressure's gone up, you're feeling out of place. There's disharmony in your body. Yes, symptomatically, your pressure went up. You're systolic and you're diastolic. But there is disharmony in your body. And now you get stressful thoughts, you overworked, you didn't sleep well now. What is that that led to your high blood pressure? Disharmony. Now let's talk about the things that create disharmony for us and how all of us, it is our personal responsibility to aim for bringing harmony back into us. You can have the most stressful job. There's nothing wrong with that. But the people who are able to survive these stressful jobs and not get sick are the ones who are able to balance harmony back into their bodies. Lots of stress, lots of relaxation. Lots of stress, now you become a victim of it and every day there's more and more and more disharmony. I can have a stressful meeting and then take 10 minutes to relax, calm down, have a cup of tea, breathe, come back down to baseline. I've moved from disharmony to harmony. The intelligence of my body has the environment to do all the functions that no doctor can do, no nutritionist can do, no neuroscientist can do, no scientist can do. They're still understanding that. It's not their job. They'll never figure it out. There's an intelligence like there's divine energy that no one can figure out. There's divine intelligence that no one can figure out. And there's an intelligence with your body that AI will never even come close to. Never. The point is to understand. Stop getting fooled with the tools that exist around you. Oh, let's take some ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is not going to change the harmony in your body. It's not. It's going to make you feel calmer. L-theanine can do that as well. A green tea can do that. A chamomile tea can do that. I'm not against ashwagandha. I'm against the thought process of, I took a pill, now everything will be okay. No, it won't be okay. You still need to create relaxation and harmony in your body by doing the work. What's the easiest way to create disharmony that can make us dysfunctional, dysregulated, nervously as well as physically, lower our immune system, create high inflammation, change our cravings and our food habits? Sleep deprivation. Number one, we sleep to restore harmony at a cellular level. And today you look at kids who should be getting 10 hours of sleep, getting seven hours. And people wonder why there's ADHD, why there's more autism. There could be several reasons, but hey, the basics are out of place. You don't try to fix a complicated problem with complicated solutions. The first step is get the foundations and the building blocks right. You're worried why your kid has juvenile diabetes. You wonder why your kid is aggressive, back answering you, throwing tantrums. Guess what? A lot of it has to do with sleep deprivation. They wake up in disharmony. Can you be peaceful and kind and happy? In disharmony? No. No, you can't. The people who are great at pretending, the people with low anger scores, who hide all of that stuff and pretend to be in harmony and calm and always giving and always pleasing people, they can do that. With, of course, the obvious consequences of it affecting them at some point. But think about it. When your kid is sleep deprived, cranky, put them on an overnight flight. Keep them at an airport where the flight is late and it's their bedtime. What do you see? Tantrums. What do you blame it on, their upbringing? Or do you blame it on the disharmony caused because they missed their sleep? And children are going through disharmony every day with sleep deprivation. Adults, you're sleep deprived and you expect to be in harmony. You think your three or four cups of coffee is gonna solve that problem? No, that's fake energy, that's stimulant energy. Humans are meant to run on cellular energy. So sleep is the biggest thing, the biggest disruptor doesn't matter how much of vitamin A, B, C, D you're popping. If you're sleep deprived, you have problems. You're in disharmony. And that's why. That's why cardiologists, neurosurgeons, everyone tells you, get your sleep right if you want to protect your brain, your heart, your immune system, and everything else. Period. That's it. So one way to create harmony, especially when you've had a stressed out day, people say, I want to go home and drink and watch endless TV. No, go to sleep. Once in a way, do that. Go to sleep. Your drink is not creating harmony. You think it is. It isn't. It's just numbing out the pain of the day. Your TV series 
is not creating harmony. It's only distracting you. I'm not against these two things, but don't think it's going to solve the problem. You solve a problem with the right solution, not with the wrong solution. So all the more you go to sleep so you can create natural magic harmony while you're sleeping. So sleep is the first easiest, most powerful, most beautiful, most therapeutic, most intelligent way to create harmony. Second, your movement. How many of you feel amazing when you take a walk or you work out? Why? It's the endorphins and you will leave it at that. But of course it's the endorphins. But what are the endorphins doing? Creating harmony. And you overtrain and you feel fatigued and tired and snappy. You didn't train. You overtrained. That has no benefit for the human body. It's created and left you with more inflammation and more problems. The point is movement can also bring us in harmony. When you're stressed out, you go for a walk in the park, you walk away from the problem, you're in nature, harmony. That's how you come back into harmony. You, you, can't, you couldn't have avoided the problem, the argument, the stressful meeting, but what is in your control is creating that harmony again. Your food, what do you think junk and ultra processed food creates in the body besides an amazing taste, which is called neuro excitement because of the fat, the sugar, and the salt. What do you think it's creating in your body and in the body of your child? Disharmony. Disharmony and more stress. Picture this. Every time you eat, it's not for yourself. It's not always for you. It's also for your microbes in your gut. You eat because you have living organisms, bugs, microbes, fungi in your, in your gut which are needed for your survival, your hormones, your brain health, your skin, your hair, your collagen, for everything. These microbes have to eat. When you're constantly eating the wrong food, these microbes start to get stressed out because, hey, it needs the right food to live. Your cells need the right food, but it's not getting the right food. You create immediate stress. You think you're happy because you have neuro excitement, but inside of you, there are blood sugar spikes because of the sugar, the carbs, the no fiber and junk and process. The very fact that your sugar levels are spiking rapidly puts the body in stress mode. Disharmony. So when people say, oh, I'm a foodie, I eat to relax. No, that's not your truth. Most people are greedy. If you're a foodie, you enjoy small portions. Oh, wow, I love this taste. I savor it. You don't need to overeat it. Overeating is greed. Like you have a you know, someone who enjoys wine. They taste a little bit, a little bit. They don't drink themselves, themselves stupid. Now, you're not, you're not drinking because you enjoy wine. You're drinking to get drunk. And if that's what you're doing, keep it clear. Don't lie to yourself. Chocolate. I love chocolate. Most people are not even eating real chocolate. You're eating compound. You're eating something that has like 30% the worst quality chocolate and then sugar and flavors and everything else. But when you really love true chocolate, you know what kind of chocolate to buy. When you really love coffee, you know what kind of bean to brew. It's a medium roast, it's a light roast, it's a dark roast. You can, you know, you can kind of make love with the flavors in your mind. Now, that's very different from the so-called Instagram foodie who's just overeating and waiting for the next free meal to come. I don't say this in a disrespectful way. I say this in a way because people think it's bringing them happiness, but it's creating disharmony in the human body. So much of disharmony. Now take, forget about the adult. Let's go to children. A child's body is growing. What do you think it needs? Vitamins, minerals. What kind of food do you think you're gonna find that in? Junk food? Absolutely not. You're creating more disharmony in your children, more hormonal problems, and a child's body and their detoxification ability, their organs, are not equipped to move so many toxins out of their body like adults. In fact, as adults, we don't have the capacity to push out so many toxins that we're consuming. What happens to a child? And then parents wonder why children get cancer. It could be several reasons. This is one of the main reasons, a toxin overload and inflammatory conditions in a child's body because it can't push, it can't push out the crap that we're feeding our children. Am I here to tell you to stop all the junk and processed food of your child? No, I'm here to tell you that it should be probably 2% of their total diet and 98% should be given to them what they need, what trillions of cells need, what microbes in the gut needs every single day. And then people want to fast for better gut health, take probiotics. Oh, it's, a, it's like a cool calendar. Oh, I'm doing a, I'm doing a 25 a billion CFU. I'm doing a 50 billion CFU. 
A lot of people don't even understand how CFU works. They don't understand that more doesn't mean better. And most people don't understand that most probiotic supplements are dead. It's a chance you're taking. When you compare a probiotic with a fermented food, a fermented food is going to do more magic than any probiotic can ever do. But unfortunately, a fermented food can't advertise itself. There's no money to make in a fermented food because everyone can make it at home. Be smart about these things. There's a place for probiotics, but most people misuse it and it never works for them. So coming back to harmony and disharmony, food. When you give your body what it needs, there's harmony because your microbes are happy. They send a signal to the brain, I'm good, I'm, I'm, I'm taken care of, I'm nourished. It's like a relationship where one partner is not getting something from another partner. They throw tantrums until they get what they want, silent treatment, all of that stuff. It's the same thing with your microbes. They create stress in your own gut and in your own body because you don't give it what it needs. So we looked at nutrition, how it can bring you back to harmony and how it can move you to disharmony. We spoke about exercise. Sedentary, disharmony, because we're meant to move. Too much, disharmony. Find your gentle balance. And if you're an athlete, train heavy, but also make sure you're resting heavy to create that harmony. We spoke about sleep. Now let's come to stress. I love how people say, but oh, everyone has stress. Who cares about everyone? Why you care about everyone? You care about yourself. What are you doing to manage your stress? Everyone has stress, but everyone's not sick because of their stress. It's the ones who allow stress to consume them, who become severely sick. And some people know how to manage stress. They feel, oh, I'm too stressed out today. Okay, let me work out. Some people, I'm stressed out, I won't work out. Some people, I'm stressed out, let me eat some good food so I feel better. Some people, I'm stressed out, let's eat some junk. There's a big difference. The problem is not stress. The problem is how you're creating disharmony when you're stressed out. And how you're not moving to harmony. So some people, oh, I worked really hard today. There's no way I'm watching a movie tonight. I need my sleep to get better. They move to harmony. Doesn't matter how much of stress they have in their life, as long as they're able to create harmony. Some people go home and watch thrash, thrash Indian series that only talk about mother-in-law issues, which is anyway a big problem in our country, or father-in-law issues or some crap that we don't need. And some people go and watch stand-up comedy. They laugh, they watch Discovery, they, they, they stimulate their brain. There's a big difference in both these categories. Two different kinds of people with the same problem but different outcomes because they made different choices. So you need to understand you are responsible for creating harmony. It's easy to look around and blame everyone. My husband's toxic, my wife's toxic, my child is misbehaved, my aunt is this way, my wife. Fine, I agree. Okay, you can't solve all those problems. If you have a solution, solve it. If not, what are you doing to create harmony when you have so much of disharmony in your life? So people think, oh, alcohol, drugs, smoking, over-socializing, mindless sex, all of these things is creating harmony. It's creating pleasure. There's nothing wrong with pleasure, but after a while, no matter how much pleasure you have, it's not creating harmony. What the body needs, the body needs pleasure. More than what pleasure, more than pleasure, the body needs harmony. When you have harmony, you already have beautiful, pleasurable feelings. Of course, you can't compare it to an orgasm or sex. That's completely different, but you know what I mean. You can still be fulfilled. You can be happy when you have harmony within you. But when you're in disharmony, what's the mind looking for? The next dopamine kick, the next drug fix, the next glass of alcohol. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not against these things. I'm against the fact that people think that these can create harmony in them. But in fact, it creates more disharmony. The drugs, pleasure, but more disharmony. Because you've got to take, you're going to take a lot of time to come back to baseline. You're looking at alcohol. I love people. Oh, I drink. I sleep so well when I drink. You don't sleep well. You fell asleep better. It knocked you out. But when you wake up in the morning, you're still tired because your sleep wasn't deep enough. You didn't go efficiently through your non-REMs and your REM cycles. So there's a difference between pleasure and there's a difference between harmony. How many of you have ever had angry sex, okay, or makeup sex? And the sex makes you feel good for a while, but then you're again back fighting about the same things, right? Why didn't it work? Why didn't it solve your problem? Because it was pleasure. It solved a, part, a problem of pleasure, but it did not solve the problem of harmony. 
It did not solve the problem of harmony. And I can guarantee you today, you can have the most complicated chemotherapy, radiation and drugs out there. Their job is to treat, to, to treat a symptom. That's it. It ends there. It ends there. And that can save your life. But it is your job to create harmony. Especially, we see so many sick people. They have wealth. They have the ability to travel the world, get the best doctors, the best teams, the best treatment. And I see these patients in front of my eyes for 13 years, perish, literally perish in front of my eyes over weeks and over months. What is missing? They have money for everything. They don't have harmony within their body. So not even the best medication will work after a while. It is our personal responsibility to create that harmony within our body. And there are so many ways, so many cheap, inexpensive and beautiful ways. Number one, know what creates harmony in you. For some people, it's nature. For some people, it's music. For some people, it's reading a book. For some people, it's socializing, beautiful conversations, deep conversations, meditation, silence, eating the right foods, having the right partner, having the right companionship. All of these things create harmony. Sometimes just going on a solo trip, being by yourself, sometimes going with your friends, but it creates harmony. There's a big difference between harmony and temporary pleasure and happiness and oh, we had a great weekend, we danced, we did all of that stuff and you forget about it. It didn't create harmony for you. It was still good for you. But what creates harmony? Because when you're able to create that harmony, those trillion cells within you are now working for you and not against you. This is the same thing in relationships, in depression, in diseases, the most deadly diseases, in your skin problems, in your hair problems, in your menopause, in your perimen, everything comes down to, first, let me create harmony in my body. Then move on to complication. Take HRT if you want it under the supervision of a great doctor who judiciously uses it the right way, stops it at the right time. There's no problem with these things. There's no problem with chemotherapy and radiation when it's done the right way, right time for the right reasons and with the right intention. But we need to create that harmony. So right now you could be a person out there going through heavy treatment. You're going to create more disharmony with fear, resistance, Googling, listening to other people's opinions. All right now I'm in an acceptance stage. I'm going through the chemotherapy. I'm going through this treatment. How do I create harmony in my body? Which toxic relationships do I need to exit, cut off, distance myself from? Where do I need to go back and take my power? Where do I need to make changes in my life? Where do I need to start doing the things that once made me happy, but I've stopped doing it right now? This is how we will change the paradigm of human disease because there is absolutely no science. You know, you had so many people who took the vaccine with so many different outcomes. Why? Why? Because the chemistry, physiology and biology of all of us are so different. And what controls that? What controls that? Our environment our harmony, the cells, our thoughts. Right now, your negative thoughts can create disharmony. And you know that, you're thinking negative thoughts, your body, your posture changes, you're angry, your cravings change, everything changes. A thought impacts your harmony, moves you to disharmony. And that's why we need to be careful of our thoughts and we need to choose the better thoughts that serve us. Don't rehearse the past, don't rehearse things that we can't change anymore because even your thoughts are impacting right now whether you're in harmony or disharmony so maybe i have a couple of negative thoughts as the human mind but it's my job to move to positive thoughts to move to uplifting thoughts so i can move from disharmony to harmony your your, your psychiatric drugs is not going to do that for you it's going to suppress certain symptoms work with certain chemical imbalances you still got to do the job of changing your thoughts and changing how you think and how you feel and all of that stuff to move from disharmony to harmony. So if you are that person out there thinking that your medical drugs, your depression drugs and all of these things are moving you from disharmony to harmony, it isn't. Please take those drugs if you've been prescribed them. They can help you feel better at a symptomatic level. But the day you decide enough is enough, I want to move from disharmony to harmony. That's when the real healing and the real recovery is going to happen. Have a good night, everyone, and peace be with all of you.